Hi, today we're going to be looking at the for do loop. We're going to work on a task that requires us to use the for do loop. The task we're going to do is simulation. Two players roll a die 30 times. Each player is awarded a point when a 6 is rolled. Simulate this with a Delphi program. Output the numbers rolled by each player. Output each player's score. Output the player that wins. I have the GUI set up. I'm using a button which name is BTN Roll and I'm using a rich edit box and we're now going to program this GUI to achieve the task at hand. So I'm going to double click on the button and I end up in procedure T form 2 button roll. The first thing we're going to do is run a loop. So I'm going to use 4 with a control space and that will pick up the loop automatically. The variable I'm going to use is R for roll 1 to 30 I'm going to take out the minus 1 do and then I'm going to use a tab space and it will automatically declare the variable R as an integer. Now please note the task requires me to roll a die 30 times which I've done. The next thing is we need to simulate the numbers on the die using a random range function. So to be able to achieve that, the first thing I have to do for me to be able to use, I need to go and declare mat in the user section as the random range is part of the mat library. So we're going to use two variables, one called die1 and the other one called die2. So die1, comma, die2 is of type integer. Get the numbers on the die. We're going to use a random range. Random, die 1 is assigned. Random range, R A N, control space, and it picks up random range 1, 7, which will give us a range running from 1 just below 7, which is 6, as there are only 6 numbers on a standard die. We're going to do the same thing for die 2. Die 2 is assigned random control space. Random range 1 comma 7. If you are not picking up a random range, then you must ensure that mat is declared in your user section. So we have the two numbers that are randomly generated. Next thing we're going to do is we want to output die 1 and die 2, the numbers that are generated on the GUI. So we're going to use red display, which is my GUI, red display dot lines dot add. And I want to display die 1 and die 2. Now please note die 1 is an integer and die 2 is an integer. So I'm going to output them in a string component. So I need to convert them using into string. INT control space into string. And I'm going to say die 1. I'm going to concatenate that, join that to into string, and yeah, I'm going to use die2. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a tab space between them. So I'm going to concatenate hashtag 9, which I hope is a tag tab space. So if we run this, let's look at what happens. So we have the numbers generated. And you'll notice if your GUI is small, we can always go back to design and just make it a little bigger so you can actually see all the numbers being displayed. Returning to my button, and if we go back to the actual program, it says two players roll a die 30 times. We've covered that. Each player is awarded a point. We've done that. And we've displayed the actual numbers that are being generated on the die. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to award a point to each player if a 6 is rolled. So it's a simple if statement. If die 1 is equal to a 6, then player 1 is going to get a point. So we're going to set up variables to store, store the points. So I'm going to say player 1, comma, player 2 
is of type integer and we're going to use those variables to store the plot points of player 1 and player 2. So before we start, each player has 0 points. So we're going to say player 1 is assigned 0. We're going to initialize each variable to 0. Player 2 is assigned a 0. So now in the program we are saying if die 1 is equal to 6, then we need to give player 1 a point. So player 1 will be assigned whatever his score is and we're going to increase that by 1. So if he's on 0, I made a mistake there, that's player 1. If he's on 0, we will just add 1 to his points. We're going to do the same thing for player 2. Player 2 is assigned player 2 plus 1. But we need to first check if die 2 is equal to 6. So we're going to say if die 2 is equal to 6, since player 2 is rolling die 2. And that covers my if statements. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to output the points for player 1 and player 2 on my GUI. So I'm going to say red display and dot lines dot add and we're going to output the points for player 1 so we can say player 1 and remember that player 1 is an integer so we need to do a conversion and I'm going to use an into string to do that int control space into string player 1 I'm also going to output the contents for player 2 or the points for player 2 so I'm going to say into string player 2 that will give us a point for uh, both the points of player 1 and player 2 uh, I'd like to actually uh, run this just to see that we are getting information coming out and you'll notice that I have all the points in between the actual numbers generated and the reason for this is I have this in the loop remember I only want the points to be displayed at the end of the loop so I'm going to cut that and take that outside the for loop now you'll notice my GUI had no headings so before I run another output I'm going to display headings before the actual numbers are being displayed so to do that we're going to say red display dot lines dot add and I want to have a heading called player one and we can use a tab space plus hashtag nine plus player two so we have headings so that the data actually makes sense or has more meaning to it I'm also going to have a heading for the points so before I do that let's run and look at what the GUI looks like so notice I have player 1 and I have player 2 so the next thing is I want to create the headings for the actual points I'm also going to put a heading called points just before we actually display the points I can either put it next to it which I'm doing And I could put a colon there and I'm going to add a tab space between the day between both the points and now if we run that let's look at what happens if you cannot see the bottom just click on the GUI on the actual text box and using your arrow key you can go down it says points 8 and 1 which means that player 1 has 8 points and player 2 has one point you'll notice that it's not in line so maybe it's best we put that on a separate line altogether which we can do and I'm really going to quickly do that by using a copy and paste to break up the data copy and I'm going to paste that there and then I'm going to take out all this just to get points to come up and if we do that now we can also take out points from here since it's displayed above it and now if we run that, hopefully that should work. You'll notice if I'm scrolling down, I'm 
getting points five and three, which means player one has five points, player three, player two has three points. The next thing we want to do is we want to determine who wins. So we have three scenarios here. We can have player one win, player two wins, or we could have a draw. So using an if statement, I'm going to check the points. If player one is greater than player two because player one and player two actually holds the points for each player then i can make a statement red display dot lines dot add and i'm going to say player one wins then i'm going to use an else statement and say else if player Two is greater than player one then I need to say that player two wins so I'm gonna quickly copy that control V to paste and I'm gonna say player two wins and the third scenario we have using an else statement if player one is not bigger than player two neither is player two bigger than player one then that means we have a draw. So else we're going to say, and I just pasted the display message, and then I can say draw. And if we now run the program, we should be able to see the program working and all the task has been achieved. So we see player one, player two. It's quite interesting to go down. And if we go down the GUI, we have five, we have three, and we see player one wins. We can make the text box a little bigger, which we can do a little later. So we can roll again. And you'll notice that I haven't cleared the area, so we can go back and do that. We see player one wins again. So I'm going to quickly, before our display takes place, I'm going to clear the display area. So using red display dot Clear. So every time I run that, I would see a bigger screen. Bigger screen. Okay, I'm also going to go to my design view, and I'm going to make that a little bigger, so I don't have to go down using the arrow key. And you can always go and just decrease your size of the actual interface. Now, if we run it, and I click on roll, you'll notice I got player one, player two, seven points one, player one wins. We quickly run through player two, you'll see he has one six. So the program is correct. You can also check player one. Let's roll again. Now you'll notice player two wins. And let's carry on pressing roll. Let's see if we come up with a draw. It's quite tough, and we actually get a draw after about six tries. So you'll notice the points are the same, and we have the output draw. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the program.